fact that we have both of those things is really, uh, you know, it's remarkable. I mean, I could I could see in, in any in any decade the decision either to lose the house or to lose the studio or whatever or to remodel them to the, to the point where you can't really recognize either one. And uh, but you're at a very you're at a crucial moment now when these these structures can take us back to that you know those foundational times here, and that's. Um, that's a very rare experience. We almost always see works of art in isolation. We see them, you know, separated from where they were made, certainly where they were first seen, where they were first viewed. And I and and I think that the opportunity that you have here of telling the the, the fullness of the story from beginning to you know to to, to now to the right. present day is really remarkable. I mean, you can trace that that history not just through the works of art, but through their original context. And that's, Absolutely, that's the that's the real the 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 gem of this you know this experience so yeah and I and I like this idea you it seems like you're doing such a sensitive job in in treating these buildings as if they themselves were works of art you know they're architectural pieces so they are works of art and they were you know they were intimately tied to to this artist and you know in his in his world We can still do that and use that in the main building, along with his actual paintings that he mm -hmm. used to create the prop collection with, but we're taking better care of the collections by having them in the building That's where right. we will yeah. have yeah. the yeah. humidity and temperature controls and be able to maintain a little bit of a better environment. And so our plan is to focus more on the structure of the studio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, incorporate a lot of the interpretation and hopefully be able to use it more for some programming, mm -hmm. you know, smaller lectures and yeah. some classes possibly to really bring people into the space, but um, to give them and be able to give them a little bit more of an intimate, you know, feel of the space by removing this barrier wall. I think there was a lot of great work done mm -hmm. at that time to take care of the building and I think it was a big improvement yeah. from what it was then and so we're just continuing that legacy of improving um, and just keeping, you know, continuing to take care of the, the studio and then along with the wonderful artifacts that were inside. Our goal is to conserve the properties uh, to meet a national historic landmark status preservation standard. We're working with a historical architect to to achieve that, and uh, with this project, unlike the environmental control upgrade which we're doing inside the museum, this project we decided to do as a pay-as-you-go project. So mm -hmm. as we raise the money, we continue to work on the effort. It's a narrative art, I right? Mean, and and it should and narration is really central to the whole enterprise. And what I like about this new this new grand plan is that in some ways it brings story, it elevates storytelling, both visual story, but also we were talking earlier about the context, and you have a right. chance here to to build context. I mean, the, the context is here, but the question is how well has it has it been used to interpret and right. tell the story? And there's lots of themes like you know her story that that specialists know that people who are really into the Russells know and understand. But the question is, is, is the average visitor here? in their two or three hours in the museum and the whole complex. Do right. they grasp that story? Are they exactly. so you've got the potential to lift up themes that have been sort of in some ways sort of kept kind of under you know uh, under the surface and you can now magnify them and elevate them. Within a master plan so that we know what the relationship is between all the stories that are being told. And then in the home and studio in particular, uh, and if the plan bears this out, I would like to see Nancy Russell's um, story brought forward mm -hmm. because it was pretty clear that she had the house built to her specifications in 1900. And then Charlie was working in, do we know, working in one of these rooms uh, painting in the house. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite stories about Charlie Russell, from all the stories that have come out of Great Falls about him, why, why it's the story of how we got Charlie out of this house and into that studio so that he had a place to paint. All those years, Charlie coming and going throughout Montana, painting wherever, painting 
in uh, makeshift sheds or rooms over saloons or barns. This home was the first place he ever really had permanently to paint. But after a while, the eternal fragrance of turpentine got to both of us and we realized he needed a place of his own. How were we going to entertain clients or, or proper folks here in Great Falls if we didn't have this house to ourselves? Now, Charlie, Charlie lived in a cabin when he first came to Montana. And he always said, if I ever have a studio, I want it to be like that cabin that I lived in when I first came to Montana. The idea of a rough cabin here in the middle of this fine neighborhood, well, it seemed out of place, but Charlie was not a lace curtain and fine neighborhood sort of person to begin with. He was a cowboy at heart, and well, that cabin did get built. And after it was built, now Charlie never finished a painting, I don't think, except in that cabin. And in the interpretation of the home and studio, I'd like to really let her voice be heard. Yeah. And then also do a gendered interpretation in these spaces so we can Fantastic. really look at a very yeah. uh, feminine space, if you will, here and a masculine yeah. space in the studio Beautiful. and get to the, the more intimacy of the relationship between Charlie and Nancy. And then inside the museum where the artwork is contained, that's really Charlie's space and the story is told through his artwork. I, you know, I love house museums and I love studio museums because they, you know, they, they locate you very, very close to, to the artist, obviously, and to their, you know, the, the intimate world in which they inhabit it. So um, there is nothing like being able to experience to get that close to the artist's life. So congratulations. I hope it's a great effort. <laughs>